What's going on, YouTubers? <clears throat> it's the Natural Born Thriller, and welcome everyone to WWE SmackDown Live Review, the show from uh, February 12, 2019. They were at Dale, Ohio. Your commentators were Tom Phillips, Byron Saxton, and Corey Graves. And this was the go home show edition for uh, WWE Elimination Chamber 2019. It's uh, this coming Sunday. Um, after I, I do the SmackDown review, I'm going to do the, the um the preview. Um, for an English Chamber 2019. Yeah, it's going to be featured for the brands of Raw and SmackDown. So let's get right to it. So as I was watching SmackDown, Charlotte Flair came out. But before she did came out, they show a recap of what happened on Monday Night Raw, where it pertains to Vince McMahon making an announcement that Charlotte Flair will, will be replacing. Becky Lynch at WrestleMania to face Ronda Rousey for the Raw Women's Championship. And how did this whole thing happen? Well, let's recap before we get to happen on, on SmackDown. On Raw, from February 11, 11 2019 at um, Grand Rapids, uh, Michigan, Triple H and Stephen McMahon came out because they wanted to address the whole thing about uh, Becky Lynch about what, what she did to Stephanie McMahon and to Triple H. So Becky Lynch came out. You know she's supposed to be suspended, but they uh they 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 invited her to be on Raw. So basically, uh, the whole story is that Becky Lynch was cleared by doctors, not WWE doctors, but um by other doctors uh, outside of WWE. There's no tear. There's no uh, injury on her, on her knee. So she can compete for, uh, for the Roman title against Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania, only if she apologizes. And Ronda Rousey, uh, basically, I'm not Ronda Rousey. Uh, Becky Lynch basically, uh, said the McMahon's the whole, the entire McMahon family has has been screwing people over for for decades, which is true. Stephen, you know, Stephen McMahon has done it before, and I think to this day she does she do does it. Triple H has done it many times before. Even Mr. McMahon has been doing it for years, for many, many, many years. Mr. McMahon has been screwing all people over for um, for all those times. I'm surprised that WWE, you know, uh, you know, in the scripted, uh, you know, in the scripted promo for Becky, Becky Lynch to, uh, to cut that promo. You know, that, you know, for her to actually to actually say that. But it's no secret, anyways. We we know we all know that the McMahon family has been uh has been uh, screwing people over for years. And I'm not talking about the entire McMahon family, you know, just just the um the majority of the McMahon family, the other McMahon families has been um, screwing people over. So basically, Becky Lynch told them to uh, take this apology and show up your R's. That's 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 how she said because you know she's she's got an accent, uh you know, you know she's got uh an an iron an iron irons uh accent. Irish, ask ask I meant to say, accent. I don't know what I'm saying now. <laughs> uh, I feel like I have an accent. Yeah, which people, people I do I do get that a lot probably. Um, people ask um ask me uh um I got an accent. Uh, and and you know, an accent, but yeah, uh, her her Irish accent. Oh, uh, that's what she had. Hold on a second. Someone's in the way there. Uh. Notification. So basically, uh, they got to uh, basically on uh, the game were um, you know, another chance to to do to, to do what's right. So they said at the end of the, of the night, uh, to basically uh choose choose her her words wisely, whatever you know, choose your words, whatever. Uh, apologize or you know or you know and and you'll uh, face Ronda Rousey at uh, WrestleMania for the Roman title or. Don't apologize that you will not uh you know get that opportunity and you'll be suspended, whatever, you know. So throughout the entire night you got a couple of people uh walking up to uh Becky Lynch, like like Ronda Rousey, Finn Balor, um I think Natalia, if I if I'm not mistaken. Um Um, 
Who else? I don't remember who else. Oh yeah, Alexa Bliss. For some reason, Alexa Bliss uh, w w walked up to uh, Becky Lynch about the whole the whole thing too. I can't remember who else. Oh yeah, I think Braun Strowman. I'm I'm assuming Braun Strowman um said something. Um, I, I don't I don't I don't remember much of people all talking you know walking up to our um, you know breaking inch about the whole situation, but just a, a few uh, that I uh, bring it up. So finally, get to the end of the night. Becky Lynch, uh, she apologized. She she is sorry, which takes away her whole um mystique of her being, you know, you know the man thing, right? Where you know she's supposed to be, you know she's supposed to be that she's you know people call her the the Stone Cold Steve Austin of this gener generation because. No, no one tells her what to do or when to do it. She doesn't apologize. She just, she doesn't apologize to any anyone or any on um, anybody, whatever. Well, she did here. So all that Stone Cold Steve Austin on comparisons could stop right now. It's dead, because back in the day in the Attitude Era, uh, even in the uh, you know when, when Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, was, was couldn't even wrestle anymore, Stone Cold Steve Austin has never apologized. He's never apologized to Vince McMahon. He's never apologized to Sergeant Slaughter. He's never apologized to Mick Foley, who was the commissioner at the time, too. He never apologized to, um, you know, uh, former WWF president, Ungur Masoon. He's he has never apologized for anything. That's what made Stone Cold, Stone Cold Steve Austin a badass. That's what makes Stone Cold Steve Austin's uh, character um, ha has uh, a, a mystique into uh, you know in in a, in a way. Well, actually, there is it, it is in in a way. All right, I meant to say. So yeah, so Stone Coast, Stone Coast, you know, the Stone Coast Steve Austin that we that we know this the same book for um, you know, for years you know years ago, will never uh, apologize to the to the um, to any authority figure in in the in the WWE, or at the time WWF. So Becky Lynch, she apologized. So yeah. This whole this whole uh thing that Becky Lynch is uh, is like st is uh is being compared to Stone Cold to Stone Cold Steve Austin is now fucking dead. I want I don't want to hear anyone saying that Becky Lynch is Stone Cold Steve Austin now. After that, after that promo, she apologized to the authorities. So yeah, that means she's not Stone Cold Steve Austin. She's not compared to Stone Cold Steve Austin because, again, Stone Cold Steve Austin doesn't apologize to anybody. And Becky Lynch shouldn't apologize either. Like like from earlier on the, on the night, she didn't apologize. She's she said, uh, "Screw your apology." You know, you could take your apology and shut up your eyes, your eyes. You know, but you know, ass. Same thing should happen here too. You know, what pertains to uh, happen later on later on in the night. So guess what? After that, they uh, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, they uh. They uh give her what she wanted. She's gonna wrestle WrestleMania for the Roman's title against Ronda Rousey. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Ronda Rousey comes out, confronts Becky Lynch, and then Vince McMahon comes out, and he says that you know Becky Lynch uh, has a, a bad attitude, and she's uh he says that that Becky Lynch is not the man. He's the man, and suspended her sixty days, and gives Charlotte Flair. Uh, the spot to face Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania for the Roman title instead. So all of that, all that bullshit that WWE uh did on Raw for Becky Lynch uh you know to uh if she's gonna apologize or not, uh she and she apologized you know which means you know she should get her t her, t her towel shot because if she, if she did uh apologize then she would she would not get her towel shot. So she apologized. That means she she should get her towel shot. Nope, this man came out and says. Nope, you have a bad attitude. Uh, even though you apologize, you're still suspended, and and the, and the match goes to to uh, Charlotte Flair because she's the runner up of, of the Women's Royal Rumble. You know, at this point in uh, time, I I would I would um you know feel sorry for for the people that watch a, a three hour show for up when that Raw um what pertains to um to the, the storyline for uh, and then the whole thing will all get to wait to uh to the end of the show for picking to to see if she's gonna apologize or not, and she did apologize. Well, guess what? 
I, I would be one of those type of people to say, uh, I apologize uh, for any of you uh, sat through a three hour show, but guess what? I don't feel sorry for any of you because yeah, yes, because for those who still watch this show, when that raw, yeah, you yeah, deserve it. You yeah, deserve everything that you got. You yeah, deserve the uh, the the, uh, the sit through uh, a three hour boring ass when that raw, and then uh, and then with the story here is that uh, Becky Lynch, um, you know, she uh, was she was you know storyline wise she was clear to she's clear. That means she should have her title shot, but no, but she has to apologize first. And then three hours later, she did apologize, and then look what happened. This man decided, to, nope, you're you're suspended, and now the, the title match will go to uh, Shara Flair. So yeah, for those who watched the three-hour Raw, uh, I don't feel sorry for you. You yeah, deserve every bit, every uh, every uh, bit of a bore, boredom, basically a boredom that yeah, yeah, gotten for watching a three-hour on that Raw. Because yes, yeah, yeah, still continue to watch the show. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, still continue to support. The show, yes, to continue to um, to support the company that screws you over time after time after time again. And no, I didn't watch. By the way, again, I don't watch a three-hour raw, raw anymore. I learned my lesson a long fucking time ago. I only watch highlights. So how did how did Shark Flair respond after that? Shaw Flair went on Twitter and said, "Wow, I didn't realize that so many, uh, you know, so many of you uh, didn't want me in the ma- in the match." You know, and then she says, "Taking that, taking that into account, I'll be asking um, management to remove me effectively immediately." And then she puts uh, "JK," which means "just kidding," and she says, "I could not possibly care less what you think." And then she had the emoji face of her smiling, whatever, and I'm just like, fuck you. And then Becky Lynch uh, on Twitter uh, tweeted, complete and utter bullshit. I agree. And also, this company is uh, is complete and utter bullshit, too. So now let's get to what happened on SmackDown. So Charlotte Flair came out, and I didn't care what she had to say. But I heard that she, about it, well, and while she was doing the ring, she was kept pointing at the, at the WrestleMania sign because she's going to WrestleMania, and she kept doing it. So far, uh, that's one thing I fucking I uh, hate. But she's over overdoing it. That's what um, uh, whatever. But she says she says that she, she's going to be at Elimination Chamber to be at uh, you know, a front row. To see Ronda Rousey versus uh, Ruby Riot for the Raw Women's Title at English Chamber, so so I'm assuming Becky Lynch's car part is probably gonna find her way to get in the building to go at the Star Flair or something like that. I don't know, cause you know, cause they want to uh, set this up if you know if they want to have a um um basically they want to set this up for for a reason. You know, for, for, you know, Star Flair is gonna uh, be at 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 the, at the pay per view to watch to watch the match. So. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't care. I didn't care for her promo because why should I care about her promo? Her promo is all about I am Charlotte Flair. I am the daughter of the man, the Nature Boy, Rick Flair. I am the most genetically superior of all the women's. In WWE, and that's a and that's a promo. Talks like a, talks like a robot. All right, so next we get to, um, so here's what happened here, folks. Uh, and I'll explain it to you right now. So, Mustafa Ali during the I believe the weekend. He suffered uh, an injury at a, a, a live house show, and that injury uh, was wasn't uh, was a concussion, unfortunately. So because of that, WWE um, they thought they thought about you know to see if he's um, if he's going to be able to uh, be clear to to Sunday's Elimination Chamber, but it, it it didn't look that good at all. So not not saying not, not saying it's a, um you know it's a serious injury, but but at the same time WWE is is restrictive when it pertains to um, concussion injuries. So Mustafa Ali, is, Mustafa Ali is unfortunately out of the of the chamber match on um, this this coming Sunday, and he's gonna be replaced. 
and you're probably uh, asking yourselves who um is is going to replace Mustafa Ali. Well, I would prefer Rey Mysterio Jr. Maybe uh Andrade Cienones, a short and Benjamin. You know, just name I mean, just name I'll name a few. But of all people, to replace Mustafa Ali, to, uh, to be in, in the chamber with Daniel Bryan, you know, the WWE Champion, uh, AJ Styles, Jeff Hardy, Samoa Joe, and Randy Orton. It's going to be one of the New Day members. So basically... It's like what they were on last year at TLC, and they and they, and, that, and that's well not, not TLC, uh, Money in the Bank. I don't know that. Oh yeah, because it's a not peer review uh, and false ladders. That's why. But I'm, my, I met Money in the Bank, you know, from 2018. Basically, the same thing what they did with New Day uh, in 2018 uh, for the Money in the uh, for the Money in the Bank um, build up, where the New Day, you know, one one was going to be in a match, and ended up being Kofi Kingston, and they're doing this again, uh, where. You know which which of the three is gonna be um it's gonna be um taking taking um Mustafa Ali's place in in the elimination chamber match. We'll get to that. Carmella and Naomi, the fabulous glow, that's their name. Uh, versus Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. Thank God they don't have a name anymore, by the way, because uh, Absolution is dead, according to Paige. And Paige will probably say, uh, thank you for not, uh, forgetting me. <laughs> you know. And finally, the Iconics. Billy K and Peyton Royce. Basically, we got the same match. The same match from last week. Last week was trash. This week, I thought it was better. Um, especially, um, where the Iconics didn't even, didn't even wrestle. They didn't even get involved. Which, you know, which we'll get to why. Uh, but as far as this match was, you know, the winner of this match... Um, oh yeah, yeah. So the basically um the team um that gets pinned in the match will start will st will start off with Sasha Banks and Bailey at the Elimination Chamber match for the uh for the Women's Tag Team Championships. That's nothing too, but uh from Raw, Sasha Banks and Bailey uh was uh basically they did a same match on Raw, the three a three way match. Where, what's it? What's it? What's the three-way match? Let me, let me double check. I'm sorry, folks. Let me, let me, let me double check before I, uh, before I talk about that. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was right. Uh, Nia Jax, Tamina, uh, versus Sasha Banks, Bailey versus the Rise Squad, which is Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan. So yeah, Nia Jackson and Tamina won by beating ba Bailey in the match. So Bailey and Sasha Banks has to be in the, uh, has to be in the, in, in the chamber match first, and now second in the chamber match now is um, Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose. While meanwhile, oh by the way, I, I kind of spoiled it by the way. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so yeah, basically, uh, Carmella and Naomi won the match. I thought the match was better. Was better. Uh, was a little better this week. Uh, like last week, even though, even though last week, uh, last week, you know, last week was the same match like this week, but whatever. But uh, hey, there's something different there. A stipulation: whoever loses this, this match gets to uh, join with Sasha Banks and Bailey to start the um, the, the, the chamber match. So, whatever. So yeah. Uh, so after the match, you got the icons, uh, you know, praising uh, Naomi and Carmella, and they also they get in the ring, and they beat up on Carmella and and Naomi. They send Naomi into the ring post. But uh, it made they made it a little bit better because uh, they they put, also put Carmelo through the ring post too as well. And I'm saying myself, wait a minute, Mandy Rose and um, Sonya Deville, along with Carmella and Naomi, were in the match, um, you know, c competing. While the Icons was just in the corners, and then out and, and also in and out of the match doing not absolutely nothing. So why the hell did they need uh, to send Carmella and Naomi into the ring post? To to gain advantage um, on the beatdown on them, they they already got the on the advantage of them when they attacked them from behind. They were, what was the was the ring post really needed? But 
But you know what? This is Vince McMahon's booking. I, I'm just, I guarantee you that was a Vince McMahon booking. He he loves he loves doing those ring post spot. It's 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 his way to uh to protect God, um his his favorites. But anyways, uh, next we get to Make Miz TV. Uh, basically, Shane McMahon and the Miz, the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, and they interview the Usos, who are the who are the challengers for them at Elimination Chamber. And I thought this was uh, a, a good um, Make Miz TV. Stupid, uh, what a dumb name. Um, hey, maybe that should be the nick their tag team name, the Make Miz. Whatever, right? But yeah, I thought the um they did what they did here was good. Um, basically, Miz uh and Shane McMahon they said they're ready for uh, against uh, to go up against the Usos. So they introduced the Usos. The Usos got um some loud Uso chance. Um, basically, the Usos say saying to um Shane McMahon and the Miz, basically they're playing sarcasm by saying, "Oh, look, it's the best tag team in the world," and all that, and then they said, "Oh." Or 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 is or is, or is it? And, he, and they basically said that they're they're not a wannabe tag team, which is true. They are a wannabe tag team. They haven't um been a, a team that long. They just been they just, they just been a team uh, since this since last month. And they haven't they haven't uh, have a, a a tag team match yet since since you know not not since um uh you know since November and and December. But anyways. But Shane Man basically uh, let the Usos know that uh, they are the best tag team in the world. They, they're going way. They're pushing this, this uh, whole thing of the uh, best tag team uh, way too seriously. So the Usos says, "Oh, um, have you guys ride together? Have you guys trained together? Have you guys eat together?" Basically, the Usos were asking each other uh, questions, and they got it right. And then the Miz and Shane McMahon were doing the same thing, except uh, except the Miz was telling the Shane McMahon and, and you know about about yo know, what's 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 my favorite this, what's my favorite that, and then he's basically uh turning that in Shane McMahon's ear and like, okay, this is this is stupid. <laughs> uh, that that part right there I thought was stupid. And then the Miz starts talking about uh to Jimmy Uso about Mandy Rose. And I said to myself, what that's got to do with uh with. With the uh, with the uh, this whole tag team championship title match that's going to happen between all uh, these two teams, stupid. And plus, uh, it was exposed. It was it was kind of exposed on TV, anyways, that Manny Rose was trying to uh, sabotage um Jimmy and and Naomi's um um you know marriage. So what was the point of bringing that up? So stupid. So the Usos basically uh you know. Talk about how they were the, the real tag team, and and that's basically it. Uh, Shane Mouse has some few words too, and then also the the they have a stare down, and then the uh, Usos uh, was uh, were leaving, and also and out of nowhere, the Usos goes for a super kick to the to the McMiz. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna call them by by way now, the McMiz. Since they want to call the, the Miz TV McMiz TV, I'm calling um, by their that, by the, um, their their tag team names. Instead of being the best tag team in the world, they're called the, the McMiz. But yeah, uh, but yeah, the Usos uh, did a super kick to on um, both of them, and something tells me right there that the Usos not gonna win. But we'll see. I hope they I hope they do win. But we'll see. All right. So WWE uh, was advertising on SmackDown this gauntlet match. This gauntlet match for the uh for the participants that are that are in the chamber for the WWE Championship. So we get Dan Bryan, the WWE Champion, and Rowan, um, Rowan, I uh, meant to say, um, basically, um, and Dan Bryan talks about you know the people uh, who wants them to lose that WWE Championship title at Mr. Chamber, but the truth is that uh, is, you know they're lying to themselves and, uh, and all that, and basically tells them that you know he's he's still going to be the WWE Champion, and he continues on talking, you know. Basically talking more on uh, more nonsense at this point. Uh, I wish he would talk about you know more about uh, the environment of of, of 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 the planet, you know. <laughs> but that's not what he did. Uh, I wish I I, I, cause, yeah, I always enjoy that that promo because Dan Bryan he's going he's um he's living by through um his uh, way, uh, way uh he goes by um in real life. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden here Biggie doing his 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 stick uh 
And now we get to the new day. Let's see who's who's basically first Biggie was was gonna took off his um his um extra gear, attire, whatever. And he, and then he's like, nope, I'm putting it back on. Like, oh, I, I was like, I was, at the point, I, at that point, folks, I was, like, I was like, fuck this shit. I I walked out of the room. I I didn't care. Cause I knew Xavier Woods was gonna do the same thing too, and also on Kofi Kingston as up being the guy. So yeah, it, so just like last year, for Money in the Bank, they were they were teasing who's gonna who's gonna go, who's gonna be in it who's gonna be in it. It's it, it's gonna. Uh, yo, it's gonna be Biggie. It's gonna be it's gonna be Woods. No, it's gonna be King. It's Kofi Kingston. Same thing that they hear. Uh, oh, it's gonna be Biggie. Nope, nope. Xavier Woods. Oh, nope, nope. Kofi Kingston. Oh yeah, yeah. Kofi Kingston. Kind of reminds me too of uh, from the Royal Rumble from uh, from 2016. Yeah, 2016, where they was teasing uh, Xavier Woods. You know, they're, they're having, um, you know, giving her, um, you know, rubbing his um his shoulders, you know, um, you know, warm, warm up and that, all that, and like you're, you're ready for this, you're ready for this, and, also, and then Kofi Kingston goes in there, like at that time I hate them too, you know. 2015 I started hating them because of the whole unicorn bullshit, and then the whole thing with the co- the, the colors and the booty, and the, and the whole the whole booty thing, and then bootios, all, all that fucking bullshit. So yeah, Kofi Kingston is, is getting the spot, and the match started with, with Dan Bryan and, and Kofi Kingston, and they, all, all they gotta do is run the gauntlet. The, the, these are the two, the two teams. Have to, uh, these are the two uh, opponents have to run the gauntlet. It you know it, it they can. So <clears throat> excuse me, Marto. So in this match, they, they went to two commercials for this match. Uh, at one point, uh, Rowan got involved in the match, where Biggie and Xavier Woods went, went after um, Rowan. Roman took out Big E at one point, and then um, Xavier Woods took out uh, Rowan, and that, and that led to uh, referee escort uh, Big E and Xavier Woods out. I was like, "Good, get rid of them." And the match continues on. Dan Bryan's, uh, yo, is um, yo, uh, wrestling a little bit for uh, Xavier Woods. I mean, Kofi Kingston, excuse me. And also, a ref- referee gets distracted from Dan Bryan uh, when he was down. And also, a Roman uh, attacks Kofi Kingston, and then uh, throws him into the timekeeper's area. Referee are uh, didn't see what happened there, but he uh he's, but the last time he saw Kofi Kingston, he was on the um he was by the ropes, and then Roman you know he's, he's uh walking walking away you know as fast as he, as he could, but he he was too late. Um you know, but referee sees uh Kofi Kingston like, like what you do with Kofi Kingston, and then he's like, you know what you're you're out you're out of here, so uh so Roman gets out too, but the way they did it was so fucking stupid. Basically, uh Roman's playing incident on this whole time, and then he got kicked out by referee, but then. All of a sudden, uh, Daniel Bryan gets uh, Kofi Kingston back in the ring, and Kofi Kingston goes for a trouble in paradise and gets the win. That's him himself women. What was the point of that? Then? There was no point for uh, to get to kick Rowan out of the, of the match because Kofi Kingston still beat Daniel Bryan. So either way, er, you know, Rowan was, was still was still um, had to go to the back anyways. That, that was so fucking stupid. There was no there was there was no need for that. That was so fucking stupid. But yeah, but but Daniel Bryan loses. To Kofi Kingston in the Scotland match, and like say myself, fuck man, I got I got I got a uh, deal more of of a Kofi Queerston. So now he's now he's got to run through the Scotland against Jeff Hardy, you know Kofi Queerston. So they continue. They, so they uh so they started the match. Match itself. Um, I'm 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 just waiting for Jeff Hardy to, to just delete Kofi Queerston uh, out of this match. But instead, Kofi, Kofi Kirsten went for the a- a- STO and gets the win all over Jeff Hardy. And I say to myself, what? Uh, are you fucking kidding me? What the fuck is going on here? As and then we and then we get to Small Joe, which Kofi Kirsten has to run a gun uh, uh, against Small Joe at this point. And I say to myself, Joe, kill him. I was literally saying, kill him, beat him. And I'm watching the match uh, between Kofi Kristen and, and Samoa Samo Joe. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm watching this match and I'm like, okay, Joe, what are you waiting for? Beat him ready. So Samoa Joe got some, some, some big close on him at one point. Um, worrying about Kofi Kristen and all that. And Kofi Kristen is fighting back and all that. And, and like, I'm like, Samoa Joe is struggling against Kofi Kristen, who's, who's, who just ran a, a, a gauntlet on between Dan Bryan and, and Jeff Hardy. Yeah, at this point, the small Joe should have just beat him. Why? Why? Why couldn't he beat him? 
so finally, I see Samoa Joe in, uh, putting Kofi Christian and Kofi Kofi in clutch. I said, so, yeah, that's right. That's it. It's over. But then, Kofi Christian gets to the ropes. He pushes he, he pushes himself off turnbuckle to pin Samoa Joe for the three count and the fucking win. And I said to myself, what? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Samoa Joe couldn't fucking beat him? I'm like, real, seriously? Folks, I, I fucking lost my fucking shit after that. I was like, I, I was just sitting there watching. I'm watching. So I'm like, really? Kofi Kingston? I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? And then Samoa Joe attacks Kofi Kingston outside of the ring. Puts him in the cocaine clutch, and then AJ Styles comes out to save him. So and basically, AJ Styles was next. Was next for Kofi Kingston to go through, and they go commercial break, and they come out from commercial break. Kofi Kingston uh, was act, was acting uh, like like he doesn't want to quit. He he want he 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 can continue to go, and he, he's just pushing AJ Styles and all that pushing and pushing. AJ Styles uh, couldn't take it anymore, and he uh, decides to, uh, to punch him. And then also AJ Styles was struggling against Kofi Kingston in the match. Now. If Kofi Kingston was not carrying himself like a bitch with with the new day for the last four fucking years, you are saying that he's a unicorn and on doing all that um that gay dancing, all that and that gay skipping and then and then the whole um bullio, bullios bullshit and the whole pancakes bullshit and the whole um ice cream uh Pasco bullshit whatever. If he wants to do all that bullshit of the new. On the new day, with, with having magic, magical powers, whatever, I would have uh, been fine with Kofi Kingston, uh, being the spot. The Kofi Kingston that uh, I was a fan of nine years ago or ten years ago, basically, I would have been fine with. But that's long and gone after the, the last four fucking years. But AJ Styles ends up being on Kofi Kirsten after the the cap killer, and they got and then you got these fans, you know, which is no surprise there because you know they 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 are fans of New Day and and they and they applaud Kofi Kingston, uh, you know, good job and all that. That should make myself a Ali spot. I guarantee you. I would I also would have been fine of Mustafa Ali going through the gauntlet against like a like a Dan Bryan, a Jeff Hardy, a Samoa Joe. And to a degree, maybe an AJ Styles. I would have been fine with uh, Mustafa Ali in that spot. I I guarantee you that that should be my, my, that that that's part of how they would have booked uh, Mustafa Ali to have him run through the gauntlet. And he he should have been gotten that that applause. That that could help him get over. But instead, it, um and you know uh, unfortunately uh inj- injuries took took that away from Mustafa Ali the concussion the concussion. And Kofi Kingston, Kofi fucking Kristen gets that that fucking spot. That's this is fucking bullshit. So yeah, the gauntlet, the gauntlet. Um, finally, uh, AJ Styles had to uh, had it was his turn to run to the gauntlet. This time against Randy Orton, except one problem. I, I noticed at the time it was about to run out for SmackDown. So sure enough, Randy Orton. Uh, comes out of nowhere and gets AJ Styles an, an RKO and gets to, uh, a quick win. So Randy Orton wins the um, the Gauntlet match, and then the show ended after that because they were they were um, they they uh they, they basically won a, a one a one minute overtime. I I can't remember the last time they they went that long for a SmackDown show. I, I this might this may be the first if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but but that's uh, of what I remember. This could be the first. Cause uh, it never, it never went um over uh, and it, it never went past ten o'clock before. Sure, it may, it may have went past ten o'clock well, because of one minute time, but that's, it's, but that, yeah, but but yeah, Randy, but basically, Randy won one won the match, and the Gauntlet match was uh, was an, uh, an hour. It was it was started from nine o'clock away all the way to ten ten o one. So, but anyways, yeah, that and that was the show. Kofi fucking Kingston. Talking about, talking about wrestling for SmackDown Live for this go home show uh, for the Nation Chamber. 
uh, from February 12, 2019, two matches. And where the fuck is Asuka? She's a SmackDown Women's Champion. Where the fuck is she? But my overall strength for the show. I'm going to go 4 out of 10. I'm on, I'm on my bro heart shit there. 4 out of 10. So that being said. Thank you all for watching. It's the Natural Born Thriller. Saying peace on the streets. Fuck Kofi Kingston.